George Stevens, Jr., the founder of the American Film Institute, conceived the Life Achievement Tribute 10 years ago, and it's grown into a distinguished tradition. George is here tonight to present the Film Institute's Silver Star to Frank Capra. Ladies and gentlemen, George Stevens, Jr. These damn Americans, Frank Capra said of his adopted countrymen, these damn Americans, they're so free, individuals, on their own, not taking their hats off to anyone. Those early lessons, a love of country and proud independence, characterized the life and career of Frank Capra. In the 30s and 40s, he chose to sing the songs of the working stiffs, the short-changed Joes, the forgotten poor. He made films in which good men found their voices. And the films were his films, made his way. Frank was never found taking his hat off to conventional wisdom, market research, the front office, or the latest trend. At a time of uncertainty in our country and in our industry, we have much to learn from a man who came here an immigrant and enriched a new art form with his ideas and his ideals. Accepting the Nobel Prize, William Faulkner spoke of the artist's duty. It is his privilege, he said, to help man endure by lifting up his heart, by reminding him of the courage and honor and hope and pride and compassion and pity and sacrifice, which have been the glory of his past. The poet's voice need not merely be the record of man. It can be one of the props, the pillars, to help him endure and prevail. Those words describe the art of Frank Capra. We told you this evening would be a little like a Capra film, filled with hope and idealism. And before we invite Mr. Capra forward, we will see the final scene of It's a Wonderful Life. It's a scene where George Bailey comes home and discovers how many friends he has, and learns that Clarence, his angel friend, has finally been given his wings. Now, you may look upon it as just the beautiful scene it is, or on this night, you may view it as the climax of our tribute, in which we remind Mr. Capra how many friends he has before we give him his wings. <laughs> Mr. Frank Capra. I tell you, I am just about the happiest man in the world. I love listening to all this talk about the so-called art of Frank Capra, art. And because you've been so kind to one Francisco Capra, born a peasant nearly 85 years ago in Bisaquino, Sicily, tonight I'm going to tell you the real secret of the whole thing. The art of Frank Capra is very, very simple. It's the love of people. And add two simple ideals to this love of people, the freedom of each individual and the equal importance of each individual and you have the principle upon which I've based all my films. <laughs> well, I've made my films, and now the American Film Institute is doing a wonderful job of helping a, a new generation to make theirs. And may I say a word to this new generation? Don't follow trends.
dark trends. <laughs> Don't compromise. Believe in yourself. Because only the valiant can create. Only the daring should make films. And only the morally courageous are worthy of speaking to their fellow man for two hours and in the dark. And now, while I'm up here, I'd like to send a few Valentines. First of all, to my, to the most important person in my life, my wife, Lou. The night I met her, I thought, what a lovely voice. I've been listening to that voice with pleasure and delight for 50 years. <laughs> Next, our three children. Frank, will you stand? <laughs> Lucille. Tom. And now our grandchildren. Stand up, kids. <laughs> Frank the third, uh, Jonathan, Maria, Claire, Teresa, Jack, Jennifer, Jim, Tony, Monica. Now sit down, you bums. <laughs> Life renewing itself. Wonderful kids. Ten of them. Now I'll admit I'm a hell of a director. I'll admit that. <laughs> Let me tell you something. If it weren't for stars like Claudette Colbert, Betty Davis, Barbara Stanwyck, Jean Arthur, Jane Wyatt, Faye Ray, Donna Reed, and Gable and Cooper and Coleman and Stewart and Tracy and Grant and Sinatra and Crosby. And without brilliant writers like Bob Briskin, uh, Joe Swirling, and Sidney Buckman, and without artistic technicians like Joe Walker, a great cameraman. Stand up, Joe Walker. <laughs> Bill Hornbeck, great film editor. Bill Hornbeck, where are you, there? There he is, there. If it weren't for them, well, I'd still be peddling papers. <laughs> An occasion like this, when we all get together to pay homage to our craft, it forces me to think, how in the hell did I get up here? <laughs> well, Nearly 79 years ago, I celebrated my sixth birthday in the black, dark hole of a creaking ship crammed with wretching, praying, terrorized immigrants. 13 days of misery. And then the ship stopped. And my father grabbed me and carried me up the steep iron stairs to the deck. And then he shouted, Chico, look at that. At first, all I saw was a deck full of people on their knees, crying and rejoicing. My father cried, that's the greatest light since the star of Bethlehem. I looked up, and there was the statue of a great lady, taller than a church steeple, holding a lamp over the land we were about to enter. And my father said, it's the light of freedom, Chico. Remember that, freedom. So, finally, there is something I must say to some other members of my family, and I believe that they will hear me. Mama, Papa, Big Brother Ben, Josephine, Tony, little sister Anne, Remember the day we arrived at the Southern Pacific Station here in Los Angeles? 
and Papa and Mama kiss the ground? Look, the American Film Institute has given me its Life Achievement Award. And for that, I am thanking them and all my friends who have come here. But for America, just for living here, I kiss the ground. Thank you very much. Before you go, I'd just like to propose one final toast to Frank Capra, the richest man in town. Thank you, and on behalf of the American Film Institute, good night, everybody. Good night.